All right, Stephen, welcome to the show. Welcome Hello. to Hello Real. Thanks for coming through. What's up? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Oh, that drink. Go. I said it like that because I'm used to calling you Stevie. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, no. that's fine, so. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. I didn't want to mess up your grown ass man name. Oh, no, nah, it's all good. <laughs> people still call you Stevie? Oh, people that know me call me that. I like, I prefer that for real. But I don't like telling people to call me that because it's like I can identify who know me, know me. So when I hear my mm -hmm. name, I'm like, oh, that must be somebody I really mess with. And, so um, you really mess with hella real. <laughs> I'll get hella much. <laughs> hey. Hella much. <laughs> we have like hella puns. What? Hella puns. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, well, why don't we just dive in? Um, just go ahead and kind of give a little intro. Tell us who you are and how you're connected to the Bay. Okay, so I am Stephen Smith. <laughs> uh, Kayla knows me as Stevie, but um, I'm from San Francisco, California, Lakeview. Um, you know, in the foggy side of San Francisco, and uh, I grew up there. I was there my first 18 years. Um, then I moved away, went to Tennessee uh, for for college. I went to Fisk, which is an HBCU. Then I moved to Michigan after after that. Okay. Okay. So unfortunately, you had to deal with some deep loss when you're coming of age. Uh, how has that shaped the work that you're doing today? Yeah, um, so, you know, um, I like to, I, I don't like to say, but I often say that the Bay is like riddled with gun violence, unfortunately. And that has impacted how I, you know, my worldview. Um, I feel like a lot of times, like in, in regular, I'm gonna say in, in and I know that the Bay is not normal. So in, in other cities, I'm not gonna say normal cities, but in other cities, you know, people in middle school might be lying on, lying on a dick, stuff like that. But in the Bay, it's like people like, is lying on having a body and, you know, violence is like glorified. So I kind of took a stance fighting that with the youth culture, fighting, being counterculture and like fighting things. Um, I lost both my brothers to gun violence. One was in Richmond, and the other one actually was like when I was in college, like in my dorm room. Um, my little brother got killed, and so it just caused me to to try to find a solution in a sense, to not to fix it, but to identify like what some of the things that cause us to live on the edge, which I found out was a little bit of like nihilism, nihilistic tendencies. Um, so that's what I fight. And that's the derivative of that is like hopelessness. So that's what I be fighting is hopelessness. So I try to do a lot of things that provide hope to the youth. All right, well, sorry to hear about you. Yeah, sorry about your loss. Oh yeah, it's, it's hard, dude. It was, it was mad years ago, um, but it still be affecting me, but it pushes me to do what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So speaking of that, tell us about your you your work with the youth. Like, how did you start, and what are your goals? All right. So, when I was back in, I realized a long time. I, I mean, recently I realized that when I was growing up, like, I was already doing like work with the youth. And I worked at Glide, and then um, like my first year in college, and then I worked, I worked at uh, the YMCA also working with youth, um, but I um, I left college and went to pursue a career in education. More recently, like last March, I launched the anti-violence initiative uh, for the youth here in Grand Rapids in Michigan. And it was, it was I built a music studio um, for, you know, youth to be able to express yourself and, and, and fight through music. Um, so that's been real positive. But it's also been hella lit too. Like, it's not like. We say, we say volcanic on this show. I, 
violence in our music is still not corny we make it a point to uh have it still something the the people vibe with and it's been picking up traction the art development portion mad at the kids want to be part of it here and um it's kind of exclusive we often open it up to for everybody to come into the studio but as far as like a group we call the collective it's um it's kind of a uh direct population we work with seven kids and we're investing a lot they've been they're, they're, they have hella shows around the city During i bet the, the kids are excited for that yeah yeah hella volcanic for it yeah love to see it <laughs> uh so when you first started in counseling it wasn't as normalized in the black community as it is now um how's the culture shift helped you as a counselor um i would say that i always try to be innovative in my methods um doing you know doing things that they relate to speaking to them in a way they relate to and like originally leaving college my my mindset was i want to create a place that is not connected to the stigma of getting help me too so it's really based in um i look at my approach is using their purpose and passion to uh, help them strive to, you know, make the changes that they want to see. So tell yeah. us about Mr. Smith's Dream Center. Mr. Smith's Dream Center. All right. So before I had this, so I have a art, I have an art gallery. I didn't say that, but in in terms of me um, trying to create that, I wanted to do a pilot. So in the school that I worked at. I created something called Mr. Smith's Dream Center. And that was a, a, a place that cultivated all of the kids' talents. And just the way that we approached it was, if somebody um, showed interest in something, I was gonna connect them to somebody in the community that was, that was connected to that, or I was gonna just research and pour into them in the capacity that they needed. And then those kids grow up and then like you get to see where they go from there and how they mm -hmm. how they grown from the from what you kind of help them cultivate. Yeah, and I'm I'm seeing it already. <laughs> so our age difference was just four years, so being thirty-three, some of them is like twenty-nine. Right. And it's two peers. I was gonna say that's two peers now. But they still call me uh Mr. Smith. <laughs> <That'd be crazy. laughs> And even walking the halls at 22, they used to, like, I used to look mad young, like at that age. And I dressed young, sometimes gold teeth. And they'd tell me class type thing. And I had to be like, hey, uh, I work here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just being hella bae. <laughs> <laughs> do you still wear gold teeth sometimes? Well, you know, I to do. Keep it hella I real. I do. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to wear them in an interview because of how much talking I was going to do. And you know, sometimes your words. And you have to retainer a little bit sometimes. Right. All right. Um, so you're, you're at uh, Muse right now? I am, yeah. I see some clouds. Oh. <laughs> behind you. So yeah, there's, there's a dope story behind the clouds. So. Mm -hmm. There is a vegan ice cream called Dream Cream. And my little sister is the owner of Dream Cream. And it's a, you know, it's a vegan ice cream. Uh, the flavors are kind of like dope. So one of her flavors is called Catfish. <laughs> and how does it taste? It's, <laughs> because it's vegan, it's like, all right. Um, it got brownies in it, stickers, peanut butter, cookie dough, coconut, and vanilla. But it's like catfish because it's like, oh, everything's vegan. There's no milk. Oh, you know? like, cat, like catfish, like me and Max catfish. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I see what she did there. I got it. Yeah. I was like, where are we going with this catfish? Right. <laughs> she got four flavors. The other one's OG, and that's just like her her play on vanilla. And then she got healthy-ish, which is my favorite. And that's like a blueberry with acai, peanut butter, kiwi, and pineapple. Mm, that sounds and good. Then, vanilla healthy. And then MTGF, and that's um, Mildred, Mildred's Thanksgiving Flex. And that's like a cinnamon maple and then sweet potato pie in it. Ooh, so, Mildred. <laughs> her, her grandma. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So it's, it's dope. And she be, she sold out right now. So usually she'll be here during our open hour, which we closed 30 minutes ago. But Yeah, I wish you could ship ice cream. Yeah. Can't wait to try it. Yeah, that's so, hella good. So tell us about Muse. Like, tell us how did it come about and the process, Muse. what you do now. Just tell us about it. Yeah, sure. So Muse, we call it an interactive art gallery. So in 20, 2016, I got married in 2015. And with my wife, I was like, hey, I don't want to have a traditional um, space. I want to, like, get... I want to buy up some property that has like living up top and um, some retail opportunities downstairs mm -hmm. because that's what I grew up in in San Francisco. Um, we got some property in my family that's uh, pretty unique. So I set out to find some property like that, ended up finding it. And I, so for the last 10 years that I've been here, I've also been doing photography and I was looking for a place that I could, uh, have my studio so that was that was in my mind um this this place was uh it was originally an adult bookstore okay. so it had porn it had everything in it when we bought it um still when you bought it like when we bought it like when we were like viewing it everything was in there like the registers all the magazines was in there i sent kayla a picture too um like all the magazines okay. all the it was like special edition stuff, dildos, all that. And it was like, it's yours with the with the purchase. I was like, I'm straight, y'all can keep that. Gee, thanks. <laughs> we ended up renovating it and the city came through and wanted to know our plan. And I told them photography studio and it was like, absolutely not. And I was like, wait, what? We bought this, ours, we're business owners, is what we doing. They're like, no, you can't have a photography on a main street. And as we got down to it, the reason it was, was when they originally started that, uh, like that coding, uh, photography studios used to be like dark rooms and it wasn't a place that you would come shoot. It was like a place that you would develop pictures like back in the 1900s, 1800s and all that. So it was like, we could work on changing that law. And like, it would have been like, a long process. It was like, or you you would have had to run for office first. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, you, or you could just uh, add some retail. So I was like, I could either sell some pictures. It was like, you can sell your photography. And I was like, uh, bet. But then as I was going home to San Francisco, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have artists like design the spaces and sell their art. And I was like, nah, nah, I'm going to have an art gallery. My wife was like, yeah, you're not happy. We're not how could we have an art gallery? And then I just start, you know, going to galleries, talking to owners and all that. And then it just happened. And we created a unique space. It's, it's an interactive art gallery. So we always have something that we do during our events. Um, and it'd it be popping. What are those called? CPT? What were we talking about? The F FDT? No, that's the other one. <laughs> Not, no, no, NFT. 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 <laughs> Y'all have any NFTs up there? What is that? Non. <laughs> it stands for non fungible tokens. What's a what? What's a fungible? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like, the new it's like digital uh, art, like interactive digital art. Yeah. Oh, let me write that down. Oh, my phone is using this thing. No, I don't remember it. No fucks today. And then <laughs> it stands for no fucks today. Yeah. Now we we talk about it 
uh, on this show. So when you that's watch awesome. this back, yeah, <laughs> watch it back. Uh, that's dope. Yeah, uh-huh. we the most sounds like you're on the wavelength of that. You get you you already. Um, yeah. But on the on the last uh, the last show that we had, mm-hmm. it was like so you would come in and we had an artist he he painted uh, I mean he created a, a picture for each song that was created by like our collective that little group I was talking about mm-hmm. and it was a bring your own headphones thing so you took out your phone and you scanned the the code and then it played the song and you had to go from picture to picture to hear the music that went with it so that was the video for oh big fat there you go yeah it sounds like you are that's dope sounds like you are right on that uh interactive wavelength that's yeah dope. yeah um so where oh go ahead no no i'm gonna what y'all are talking about though because you know grand rapids be a little behind san francisco <laughs> look we just learned about it yeah like yesterday <laughs> Um, so, uh, where are most of your featured artists from and how do you find them? Um, most of them are from here, but I mean, a lot of them come from like Chicago, um, Detroit, but, um, Instagram connects us with a lot of artists from all over, um, from basically all over the world. But we, more recently, I've been trying to do a push to connect with artists in the Bay. Um, but now I have to, because there's things that's going on that's gonna cause me to uh, be there. Be in the so, Bay? In short, there's going to be a music that very shortly. Okay. Uh, if you need a people at your grand opening, you know, holla at you girls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We would love to collab on something with your opening. Yeah, for sure. I'm coming. Okay. I'm first. We're gonna start with pop up with pop ups. Okay. Um, and we have we already have the building. Um. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, we got the buildings. Got to create what we want to see now. So I'm thinking this summer. Oh, that's very soon. Yeah. But we yeah, obviously, yeah, we yeah, connect yeah. with a lot of Bay artists. Uh, this is a Bay Area artist, Matteo Da Vinci. That was my husband. Uh, oh, perfect. Yes. Not, not, He's retired not, now, so he just paints paintings. Um, <laughs> that's Tony B. Conscious. I don't know if you've heard of him. That one, I, to I, the right. Yeah, I got to get my Bay Area um, artist inventory up. I got to with Jesse and me. That's exactly <laughs> who you need to talk to. <laughs> Duh. Well, that's awesome. So either, either you could say your future themes or what you've had in the past, but what are some of the themes you feed in your in your gallery when you have your featured art? Um, we, we like to keep it interactive. I said that um, the, one of the past themes, of course, we had a Black Art Matters exhibit. Um, but I'm always looking to do something that's innovative and new, as you know, as most creatives are. So I just try to keep it something that people never heard before. Um, we got an event we do called Art Mosa. And and that's that's a uh, we always pair something tasty or delicious with an art with a mimosa. So usually it's like a free event. Um, we'll have free mimosas and then, for example, we have waffles at one of them or another one at donuts from a local a local place. And, you know, we make everything free. People come out and they buy hella art. Nice. So is the Bay Area Art Week want to be featured like how did that work can they reach out to you or how do you you know what's the selection process like? yeah so i mean i just love i love connecting with artists so really as long as it so when it looks amateur um i'm going to leave it up to the artist to pub it 
but you still have the opportunity to show it. Okay. I just might not pub it if I don't align with it. That's um, it. Artistically, I have to, you know, we want to align with the views, but I like with the inspiration, but um, if your skills ain't aligning with what I like or love, I still will allow people to show here. It's just, um, it might not be all over our site. Uh, that makes everyone sense. gets a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Was, somebody, was, somebody else might like it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's subjective. So even me thinking it looks amateur, I might be tripping. And yeah, I'm a non I'm not I'm a non-traditional gallery, so I don't hold like my opinion up here. I'll be like, this is what's up. Or if I don't like it, I might say it's, it's not my taste, but I know that there's people who will like it. So let's do it. Um, just make sure you got you invite your friends and family so you can have some people show up. <laughs> Cause I'm not, I you know I I um I spent a lot of time building my network of buyers and people come to buy art and it's a certain standard that that has had and I try to stick to like simple things like materials used, um, if it's finished, like is it like gallery ready like it's a hangable so for artists that's what we're looking that's a lot of times what i'm looking for like is it am i able to hang it Cause sometimes people be like i do art i'm like that's what's up and they bring art but it's not like hangable so it's like mm -hmm. you're dropping it off um you want me to go make it ready to be installed like i'm not i'm not sure so that's that's one of the tips and do you charge like a gallery fee or what about that um, yeah, I, I charge commission, um, so it's, it's 30%, yeah, we do 30%, but if they rent the space out, then they keep everything, so it's just, it depends on how confident you are, your art selling. Got it, got it. Uh, okay, we want to talk about skin, skin tone crayons. <laughs> oh yeah oh oh yeah um we had an idea my wife had an idea to um to to have personalized crayons so let's say there was a crayon that said hella real show but the colors are like skin tones you got your browns your peaches your yellows whatever any hue of skin tone and then it's all it's cooked into a crayon and then you know she packages package it it nice and ships it off. Um, so that's that. And we got that on our website now. Um, big plans for that. So are they for display or you actually color with them or? So you, they're, they're actually, you could color with them. And there's a page, there's a coloring page that goes with it. On it, it says color for the culture because my color is dope. And that's yep, absolutely so necessary. That, and then I wrote a children's book that um, that goes with the crayon too, but that's not released yet. Um, I'm working with the illustrator now. Nah. Um, so it's it's pretty cool learning retail. That's been a a, a learning process. Mm. But, you know, you want to hit the algorithm right for them sales to pop, um, SEO and all that. So. Cool. If y'all know anything, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and we can get the algorithms up ourselves, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the last question. Uh, it's not really a question. <laughs> oh, we are hella real. You gotta fill in the blank. You are hella. Creative. <laughs> I'm gonna, Duh. I feel like maybe that's like a uh, cliche. But, oh yeah, I did say, I was gonna say uh, resilient, hella resilient. Hella resilient. Okay. Yeah, because of, of the things I feel like I overcame. Um. All right, well, thank you for joining us. And um, yeah. why don't you drop your socials or website, whatever you wanna plug. All right, what if what if I, uh, if I show the, I have a, 
a 20, 20, 25 second video. Okay. Of what our space looks like when it's not COVID. <laughs> yeah. Is that all right to share with the people? That is a hundred percent. So right. me. So this right here is a video of our art most of it. Um, there's about five to six hundred hundred people who came in and out that day. Thousands and thousands of dollars in art was sold and it was pretty cool. Yes. Like real soon. I look, I look to see you all in San Francisco at Muse SF. 